you know you did all that, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Philip Duffy, class of 1956. After graduating from Hopkins Academy, Philip attended the Providence College and joined the Navy in 1961. He became a helicopter pilot and served two tours in, in Vietnam. In 1975, Philip became the commander of the nation's largest helicopter squadron in San Diego. He became a captain of two Navy premier warships, the USS New Orleans and the USS Tarawa, off the coast of Beirut during the Lebanon crisis in 1983. In 1987, Philip was promoted Rear Admiral and took command of the Navy's regional commander of the Middle East. His final call of duty was to command the, nation, national, the Navy's reserve wing in Norfolk during the first Gulf War. In 1993, Philip retired from the Navy after serving for 32 years. Philip wants you to know that he, was married, that he is married uh, <laughs> and has been to, for 52 years to the former Carol Zack of Greenfield. Unfortunately, Philip is not able to join us today and we will make sure he gets this award to him. Thank you. Catherine Kate Dwyer, class of 1934. Just uh, one more thing is that afterwards we were trying to, we're going as fast as we can to keep everything going, but afterwards, if everybody could stick around for a minute, we'd like to get a picture of everybody that is going to be noted today uh, to preserve. Catherine Kate Dwyer, class of 1934. Born in North Hadley, Kate attended and graduated from Our Lady of the Elms. She later earned her master's degree at the University of Massachusetts. She began teaching at her alma mater Hopkins in 1939, where she soon became the highly respected member of the faculty and its most popular teacher, with the students for all her interest in them and their futures. She resurrected the debating team as a student activity. She was a strong and advert avid supporter of other student activities and extracurricular events. After 15 years at Hopkins, she left for Northampton High School in 1954. There, she continued to teach history and became a guidance counselor. Many of her former students in Hadley attribute their success to the accomplishments and their accomplishments after Hopkins directly to Ms. Dwyer and her earnest interest in them. From the 1954 yearbook, Ms. Dwyer, the news of your resignation has reached us. Our eminent reaction was in shocked silence. Our feelings are that of deep regret. We know that in 15 years you have faithfully devoted to the youth of Hadley. We, as well as former students, have only respect and admiration for you. Your modesty, your enthusiasm, your amicable personality, and your interest in all of us have established us, have established you as a sincere friend to all of us. However inadequate this slight recognition may be, we truly realize how fortunate we were to have you here at Hopkins for 15 years. I'd like to ask Robert Gladden to please come forward and accept the award on the behalf of his great aunt. Bill Dwyer, Jr. Bill is active in the trustees at Hopkins Academy and has been for a number of years. The trustees oversee the trust fund that supplements the programs and materials for Hopkins and the awards of scholarships to the seniors each and every year. He's been a supporter of the band and the drama club at Hopkins. His son is a member of the class of 1914 and his other children are Hopkins Academy grad alumni. He's been on the planning board for many years and attends bi-monthly meetings faithfully and as well as town meetings. And as for a long time been an attorney in the town of Hadley who helps the Hadley residents with their interests and legal needs. Bill is a go-to guy for all of Hadley planning board issues. As his secretary, he documents all the rulings and has a vast knowledge of the historical data. Next up will be Bill's father. And in the words of country singer Hake Williams, I believe you're gonna see that Bill Jr. is in many ways following a family tradition. Bill, please come forward.
We're going to ask Bill to please stand forward as the next person in line is Bill's father, William Dwyer Sr., class of 1918. After graduating from Hopkins, Bill Dwyer Sr. attended Williston Academy. From there, he graduated from Amherst College in 1924 and received his doctorate from Boston University School of Law in 1928. He was admitted to the Massachusetts Bar in the very same year, 1928. During World War II, he served in the United States Naval Reserves in the Office of Naval Intelligence in Washington, D.C., and as a U.S. Naval Attaché in Australia. He left service in 1946 as a commander. Bill was elected to the trustees of Hopkins Academy in 1941 and became its president in 1956, a position he held until 1992, and he continued to serve the board until 1994, a total of 53 years. Bill's community service, Cooley Dickinson Hospital Board of Trustees, Child's Park Foundation Board of Trustees, Interfaith Housing Corporate and Off, Corp and Off in Amherst Board of Directors, Porter Phelps Huntington House Incorporator and Board of Trustees, Hadley School Committee 13 years, Hampshire County Chapter of American Red Cross, Chairman, Hampshire County Public Health Association Inc. President, Historic Deerfield President, Western Mass Lung Association, President and Lifetime Honorary Member. Other awards, Distinguished Service, Williston, Northampton, Distinguished Service, Cooley Dickinson Hospital, Porter Phelps Huntington House Honorary Service Award, and Honorary Doctor of Law Degree from Our Lady of Elms University. Congratulations, Bill Sr. as well. Mr. John Gnotic, class of 1951. John first studied under Steve Hamilton in Amherst. He then studied art at the University of Miami, Maryland Institute, and the London City Guild Art School in England. As a teen, John started painting murals at the Big E. For over 50 years, John's paintings have created a lasting visual record of the changing seasons and transformed the storefronts of Western Massachusetts. Over his life, John has received many, many, many awards, including Best Watercolor and Best in Show at the annual Cambridge, Maryland Art Show. For over 20 years, John has painted the room-sized murals in the, at the Massachusetts building at the Big E Eastern States Exposition. John is noted for his landscapes, especially birch trees, street scenes. As his media, he uses watercolor, oil, acrylic, and miniature wood carvings a member of the Southern Vermont School of Art Center, North Shore Arts Association, the Williamsburg Brush and Palette. He is also the past president of the Deerfield Valley Art Association. His paintings are in many private collections in the United States, Europe, Central and South America, Canada, Japan, the Caribbean, as well as many corporate collections across the United States. Please come forward, John, and accept your award. Just one more thing. Just one more thing, Mr. Gnotic. I have many of your paintings in my house as well. I bought Clarence Hawks' house, and at one, I, I was able to buy one of yours at the 350th as well. Mr. Peelis would like to have a word with you as well. During our uh, research of the history of Hopkins, we came across a uh, drawing done by John Gnotic uh, in 1945. He was in eighth grade at the time, and he drew this particular drawing. This is the original. So we decided to give this back to him as a gift. Aww. We promise it's not a forgery. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Judge Harry Jekinowski, class of 1925. Born in Hadley, he married Estelle Gnotic and had two children. He was, an he was educated in Hadley schools and graduated from Hopkins in 1925, served as a trustee. In 1930, he received his law degree from Boston University. Upon his return to Hadley, he served as town moderator and later as town council. Town moderator. Yes, Okay. your business. 
He received the national honor in 1948 as the Democratic electorates go to the Electric College in Washington, D.C. as he cast his vote for Harry S. Truman for president. Harry was active in community affairs, serving as the county chairman for the Red Cross Appeal and served in the Crusades for the March of Dimes. He was active in the Northampton Lodge of Elts, serving as the exalted ruler. Harry enlisted in the Army during World War II and served as a corporal in the infantry for two years. In the oversee, uh, he was overseas at Mount Kinneso Avard area and participated in the first wave fighting at Anzo Beachhead in Italy. After the war in 1954, on uh, 1945, he was appointed uh, Special Chief Justice District Court sitting in all western counties. In 1960, he was appointed by the governor, Justice of what was known today as Hampshire County Probate Court, where he served until his retirement in 1977. One of his famous uh, cases. In July of 1976, the Massachusetts Supreme Court upheld the decision to withhold life-sustaining treatment for a terminally ill, mentally incompetent person at the Belchertown State Hospital. This ruling, which is still good law today, was a landmark decision receiving worldwide attention that guarantees the rights of mentally incompetent persons have the right to have their interests fully considered throughout the court system. As a judge, Harry was a man of character, ability, honesty, and integrity. He had the gift of common sense, he was very practical, and had a great sense of humor. He brought up his family, he was brought up on the family farm on Roosevelt Street, and never lost his love for, and respect for the earth and farming. Harry was proudest of being the first in his family to go to college. It was Hopkins Academy that taught him how to study and work hard in school. I'd like to ask his son, Harry Jr to come forward and receive his award. Bernard Juskowitz, class of 1962, resident of Cambridge, Vermont. And I looked on my internet and I say that's about three and a half hours away, just above Burlington. Graduated from Hopkins in 1962, went to college at Aporia, Aporia, Kansas, class of 1966. His work history. He worked in management for IBM in the accounting, finance, and personnel department for 25 years, and then he retired. Then he went to work for the state of Vermont as a manager for the Department of Employment and Training for 10 years. Then he retired. He went to work for Snug Smugglers Notch, but it doesn't say that he ever retired from that. <laughs> and then he was elected to Vermont State House as a, state, as a representative in North, November of 2012 and currently serves as a member of the Education Committee. Even with these four different careers, Mr. Chuskowitz still had time to give more. He was a member of the Cambridge Recreational Board, member of the Lemoy. Union High School School Board for 15 years, member of the Cambridge Elementary School uh, School Board, member of the Town of Cambridge Select Board, member of the Finance Committee for two decades, member of the Lemoyne County United Way, currently president of the Vermont uh, State Golf Association. Interesting fact on him, he'd like to know that he married Sue Weshkevitz and has been for 46 years. Please come forward. Weinzig, what did I say? Weshkevitz. We're going to stop that right here. I'm very, very sorry. Married to Sue Weinzig for 46 years. Here comes the Irish, Mr. Ed Kelly. Class of 1946, born and raised in Hadley and lifetime dairy farmer and tobacco farmer. Received the Green Pastures Dairy of Distinction Award. Employed many Hopkins Academy students throughout the summer picking cucumbers and harvesting tobacco. Raised 12 children in Hadley. All of them are alumni of Hopkins Academy. He's the director of the Farm Bureau and past president, director of the Northampton Co-op Auction. Long-term Knights of Columbus, Hadley Lions Club member, King Lion, and received the Melvin Jones Fellowship Award for Distinguished Service for the Lions Club International. 
served on the Sewer Commissioner for 12 years. Hadley Selectman, supporter of the Hopkins Athletic by attending all the games. He was a founding member of the Sports Boosters and continues to be a Sports Booster member today. Each year without fanfare, Ed donates potatoes and squash to the most Holy Redeemer families who are in need. Thursday nights are family pizza night at the Stockbridge Road home. They have pizza, they have pizza 51 weeks a year and turkey one. <laughs> There's always between 20 and 40 nightly Kellys to liven up the week. Another interesting note, Mr. Kelly has for 30, had for 32 years, consecutive years, between 1959 and 1991, and had a, chi a child in the Hadley Public School System. But Kathy's here to let us know that she had a little help in that. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, please come forward for your award. Now you know how he got elected. <laughs> Mr. Kelly would like you to know all his family is here today. <laughs> Mr. Michael Klamoski, class of 1973. In 1974, the final year, Mike started working for the Town of Hadley Highway Department. After 11 years of working in this department, he was appointed Highway Superintendent in 1985. As the Highway Superintendent, Mike works closely with all town departments, particularly with the schools, especially in the winter months, ensuring that the town roads and school parking lots are safe for the students and school personnel. Nice job today, Mike. <laughs> In 2011, Mike received an award by Dr. Nicholas Young as superintendent at school at that time for Distinguished Service Award for Selfish Contributions for the Hadley School District. Another one of Mike's loves is his love of far far farming. If Mike's not working for the town, you'll find him baling hay, gathering eggs, or tuning on a vintage piece of equipment. That's what affectionately has been named the little bit of nutting farm on River Road in Hadley. Whether fixing a water main break at 3M, marking trees, or ensuring the snowy streets are ready for the people to get to work and school, the townspeople of Hadley owe you, Mike, a debt of gratitude as you enter your 40th year of service to the town. Please come forward, Mike, and thank you for all your years of service. Mr. John Kokoski, class of 1967. Since graduating from Hopkins, John has had an extraordinary career that spans agricultural, entrepreneurship, and community service. At Hopkins, John was an active member of the band and lettered in basketball. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> After graduation, John attended Stockbridge School of Agriculture at the University of Massachusetts where he studied agricultural business management. His fondness for dairy cattle was developed at the times when he worked on the family farm and was active in the local 4-H clubs with his Jersey cows. John purchased Northampton and Boston Express with a co-worker from Hibbard's farm in North Hadley. John employed many Hadley residents, giving fellow friends and neighbors a solid employment a solid employment opportunities. At the height of his success, John's company employed in excess of 125 people and built a reputation as an honest and hardworking company for which to do business. After selling the trucks and the business in, 2000 and in the year 2000, John focused on his passion, his Jersey cattle. After witnessing many of his fellow dairy farmers being forced out of the business due to decreasing milk prices and higher feed costs, John sought, the, John sought an alternative which he knew could sustain his own dairy operations. He also hoped to inspire other dairy farmers to know that they could survive at this time as well. After extensive research and planning, John started a direct marketing of his own milk products under the family name Maple Lion Farms. We enjoyed it today with our coffee. The family owned bottler and Ware 
helped bottle the milk. The product quickly grew a following and once again John started building a, another business. He purchased a milk plant in Ware and moved it to his farm in North Hadley in 2004. Today John employs 14 people part and full time and his products are sold in between the Berkshires and Boston. John has also served his community in many ways. He served as a fire department, as a lieutenant, served at, as a member of the Hadley School Building Committee, currently serves on the town's Zoning Board of Appeals. He served on the board of the Holy Rosary Church, former Shawmut Bank in Amherst, and is currently a board member for the Amherst Chamber of Commerce, representing Hadley businesses and agriculturally related business. John's been a longtime member of the director of the 3-H Fair, of the Three County Fair in Northampton a member of the Mass Agricultural Club, and serves as a regional director for the American Jersey Cattle Association. He's been the longtime treasurer of the Mass Dairy Association, and in 2002, he was named Massachusetts Dairy Farmer of the Year. John remained here, raised his family in Hadley with his wife Elaine. Their three children are all graduates from Hopkins Academy, and John can still be seen in the school cheering for the Hopkins basketball team, attending band performances, and supporting functions that his grandchildren are involved in at this time. His dedication to the town and school system reflects his deep family feelings and his commitment for community spirit instilled with him not only through his family, but also through his experiences during his formative years at Hopkins Academy. John, please come forward. James S. Kazira, class of 1958. After graduating from Hopkins, Jim went to Hamilton College and earned a bachelor's degree in economics. He then went to Rutgers School of Business where he earned a master's degree in business. He joined Price Waterhouse, an international accounting firm, as a staff accountant in Boston. In 1965, he, became a license, he received his license to practice as a certified public accountant. Jim worked for Price Waterhouse for 38 years, mostly in Boston, Hartford, and New York City, retiring in 2001. He was a partner at that firm for 26 years. He remains active in the professional organizations. He served on the nonprofit and community organizations over the years, including the board chairman of the New Dawn Preschool for Minorities in Hartford, Connecticut. After retiring at age 60, he joined the Ada Company, a CPA firm located in Brewster, New York, which is founded by his wife Susan, also a CPA. He continues to work for that firm and was recently appointed as an arbitrator for the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. He hears cases and disputes between clients and brokers and dealers engaged in the securities business. What he remembers most about Hopkins, aside from the fun, is the impact it had on his life. And, Jim says, Hopkins provided me with the basics to build a durable foundation, instilled in me a strong work ethic and the confidence to deal with life issues. It gave me an edge in life. James, please come forward. Stanley Kazira, class of 1935. After graduating from Hopkins, he attended Boston Conservatory of Music, focusing on written music and playing the violin and bass fiddle. He was the founder of the Knights of Melody Orchestra, which featured Polish music. He and his nine-piece band played at various functions in New York and Western Massachusetts, and one special place, the White Eagle Hall in Northampton. He was a frequent guest on local radio shows per featuring Polish music and requesting, and requesting contributions for the Jimmy Fund. Stanley was appointed to the Finance Committee and later appointed Superintendent of the Highway Department in Hadley. He was active in politics. He was a delegate for the State Democratic Party. He was appointed Assistant Register of Deeds for Hampshire County and later elected Register of Deeds for two terms. He was the first registrar to computerize all documents coming into the registry. He was a member of the Young Men's Club in Hadley. The committee for the annual Christmas party for the children was his part. He was a member of the Knights of Columbus. He helped with fundraisers for needy people all his life. He and his wife Stacia graduated, he is, his wife Stacia graduated 
from Hopkins Academy in 1936, and all three of his children are Hopkins grads. After his retirement at age 72, he continued to play music professionally and was active in farming. I'd like to ask Jeff Kazira to please come forward and accept the award on behalf of his grandfather. Ruth McQuestion, class of 1930. Ruth attended Hadley Elementary School and graduated from Hopkins Academy in 1930. She was a secretary for a class and served on the girls' basketball team. Ruth received her teaching degree from Middlebury College and attended Northampton Commercial College. In 1935, she started teaching a few business courses that were just starting to be taught at then Hopkins. Ruth was a class advisor for many years and attended all the classes, the class reunions. After 13 years there, she joined the faculty at the business school she attended, which became Northampton Junior College. She taught there for 29 years, and then she taught at both Greenfield Community and Holyoke Community Colleges. In 1974, Ruth became a full-time instructor in the secretarial sciences at Holyoke Community College, where she retired from in 1979. Ruth was very active in her church, the Hadley Historical Commis Society, the Hadley Farm Museum, the Porter Phelps Huntington House, and gave tours of the oldest house in Hadley from when she lived, the Porter Phelps House on West Street, uh, with, since 1908. Ruth was quoted as saying, I have thoroughly enjoyed my 44 years of teaching in the secretarial field and business. Just another little note, Ted told me this. Ruth used to go to work in some capacity for Mr. Clarence House, Mr. Clarence Hawks, the blind poet of Hadley. And one day after Teddy begged and begged and begged her to take him along to Mr. Hawks' house, she, did, she relented and let him in. Later that morning, the phone rang at Mr. Hawks's, and Mr. Hawks was speaking to the caller. Ruth, overhearing the conversation, inquired, who was that that called? Why, it was your mother. She's looking for Ted. I told her he wasn't here. Ted piped in from the corner where he was unbeknownst to anyone else, was, like, no, unbeknownst to Mr. Hawks, piped in, but I am here, Mr. Hawks. I've just been quiet over here. Mr. Hawks gave Ted a dime for being so quiet and sent him along his way. <laughs> Would Cindy or Robert McQuestion, whoever's here, please come forward and accept this award on behalf of your aunt. Connie Mitch. <laughs> Connie graduated from Hopkins Academy, class of 1962. She was a town assistant town accountant for the town of Hadley, town treasurer 1988 to present, initially appointed to the post in 1988, and has been elected to that po uh, position in three-year terms ever since. She's a tax collector for three years, served on the Hadley Planning Committee, and has served the town a total of 36 years thus far. She was a member of the 300th Committee Tricentenary Committee and was on most of the committees at that point in time. She's the Vice President of the Alumni Association of Hopkins Academy, Chair of the Alumni Reunion Banquet Committee, member of the 350th Anniversary Committee of Hopkins Academy, a lifetime member of the Polish American Citizens Club, and she says the referee for the Michkowski family. <laughs> Connie also oversaw the decorations for the center of town for our 350th for our town. I don't know if you happen to see them or if you weren't in town, but they're on the book that's over there for the commemorative book. Connie, please come forward and accept your award. Thank you. 
Judith Pellis. <laughs> Hadley being a farming community instilled in its youth work ethics that would help achieve their goals in life. Coming from a large family, Judy knew early, at an early age, that hard work and perseverance would be necessary for her to reach her, her lofty personal goals. At Hopkins, Judy was involved in sports activities, cheerleading, band, and chorus. While a student at Hopkins, she held a part-time job, plus work on the family farm. At graduation, she re received the Hadley Teacher Association Scholarship. She went on to Westfield State College, where she pursue, pursued her career in education. She taught at Deerfield School Systems for four years, and during the summer, she taught summer school in Hadley. After marrying and having two children, she returned to the classroom in 1972 to teach at Hadley. She taught in the very same first grade that she had gone to. During her years of teaching at Hopkins, she held the following position. Secretary of the Hadley Teachers Association, head teacher for over 10 years, and acting principal for one year. Some of her accomplishments beyond teaching were she wrote a storybook about baseball for elementary children, developed a yearly walk for classroom greenhouses, wrote a disciplinary pro policy for the adaptation, and was adapted by the elementary school. She's the one. <laughs> Wrote a grant to extend the full-time uh, day, uh, daycare to kindergarten. Developed the college. Uh, developed with a colleague the flag day activities that still continue to the, each year, and developed a month-long read across America program, including relatives, friends, and local dignitaries as readers. Long before the NEA marked March 2nd on their official calendar, awards received in, 19, in 2004. She was selected by the Hadley School Administrators to receive the Pioneer Valley Excellence in Teaching Award sponsored by the Harold Greenspan Foundation. She also received a plaque from the Hadley School System in recognition of her dedication and service to the school system. After 32 years of teaching in Hadley, she retired to have more time to enjoy with her four grandchildren. Judy is remembered by her colleagues for her mentorship and her leadership skills. Please come forward, Judy Pellis. Helen Rodak, class of 1940. Helen graduated from North Hopkins Academy in 1940. She went on to graduate from Northampton Commercial College in 1942. She worked at the Springfield Armory and was a waitress at the Aquavita restaurant. She worked for many years in the Hadley School Cafeteria, plus was a bus driver, using her own station wagon on routes that were not accessible by regular buses. Helen also worked at UMass Housing Services and retired in 1985. After retiring, she went back to work at the Hadley School Cafeteria as a substitute. In 1994, the Hopkins Yearbook, she was honored as the super sub for her cafeteria worker, as a cafeteria worker. Helen was a member and one of the founding mothers, members of the Hadley Mothers Club. She was an advocate for starting kindergarten classes in the Hadley School System. She was active at the Most Holy Redeemer Church, being a member of the following Parish Council, Church Building Committee, Captain of Bingo, Three County Fair Food Booth, plus worked at several church fundraisers. Helen was a member of the Northampton Lodge of Elks, the Hadley Grange, and also worked at the Hadley Voting Polls. Besides working for the Hadley School System and UMass, she was active in the community activities and clubs and worked at the family farm and brought up eight children, all of, went, all of whom graduated from Hopkins Academy. Helen was a supporter of the school sports and the music department. She attended school activities and continued even after her children and grandchildren had graduated from Hopkins. Her last living wish was to have her mem memorial donated to the Hopkins Academy Music Department to purchase instruments. The monies that was acquired at that time helped buy the baby grand piano that they use today. Would Robert Rodak please come forward and receive this award on behalf of your mother. Dorothy Russell, class in 1931, like I had to say anything about Dorothy Russell. 
a direct descendant of the Reverend John Russell, who led the original settlers to Hadley in 1659. Dorothy was born in 1913 on River Drive in North Hadley, a house where she lived her entire life. She graduated from Hopkins in 1931 and then North Adams State Teachers College. She came back to teach Russell School where she occupied the same room for the next 38 years teaching fifth grade. Miss Russell was a founder of the Hadley Historical Society. She remained an active member in the group all her life. She was the first citizen in town to be appointed to the newly formed Hadley Historical Commission in 1974 and remained a member of the commission until 1999. Most of the work Miss Russell did for the town was done very quietly and unknown to all. She was indeed the town's historian. Anyone who had any questions about the history could call her. If she didn't have the answer right away, she'd research it until she found it and got back to them. She spent countless hours responding to inquiries from all over the country about genealogical information. She was often found in the basement of town hall researching records so she could answer these questions and provide the people the information about their ancestors. She worked in the Historical Society's upstairs room at the library, filing and preserving documents, clippings, and other materials related to the history of the town. On other occasions, she would be leading a walking tour of West Street Common and teach the history of the town to the point, point out the landmarks to Hadley's youngest residents. A gracious, unassuming, modest woman, Dorothy Russell served her community in her North, North Hadley Church all her entire life. With her vast historical knowledge and her tireless dedication to Hadley, she was truly and uniquely an irreplaceable town historian. Would Marjorie Pratt Townsend please come forward and accept this award on behalf of your aunt. Margaret Peg Tudrin. Education, Hopkins Academy, class of 1954, Smith College, class of 1958. Peg's work history, teacher of social studies at Hopkins Academy Junior High School, teacher of social studies in history at Hopkins Academy, teacher of social studies, history and psychology at Northampton High School, social study department head, district curriculum coordinator for social studies, president of Northampton Teachers Association, Member of the Massachusetts Teachers Association Political Candidates Recommendation Committee. Member of the Mass Teachers Association Retirement Committee and one of the co-founders of the Northampton Educational Foundation. Peg's civic involvement. Appointed by the Hadley Select Board to serve on the town as a member of the Historical Commission, Long Range Planning Committee, Community Preservation Act Committee, Chair of the Personal Policies Handbook Committee, Longtime member of the Hadley Democratic Committee, serving as chair, member of the Hadley Historical Society, and was nominated by my partner, Kate Nugent, selected as Distinguished Woman in Massachusetts. This is a group of women recognized by the State House each year as a woman who have a very positive impact in their community through their volunteer service. Peg is the go-to person for Hadley history now. She knows where the flowers bloom and she knows where the skeletons are buried. In very plain and understandable English, you will get the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> so help me God. <laughs> Peg wasn't able to join us today, but her sister Kathy is here to accept the, the award on her behalf. Just a side note, Peg was extremely instrumental in getting a lot of the information that we've brought together for you today. There was a lot of, uh, some of the names that were presented to us, there was not a lot of knowledge, but people just knew that these were people we should make sure that we we know we recommend tonight and Peg did an awful lot of legwork and I really really appreciate all her efforts for that thank you Peg Kathy <laughs> Tom Washkevitz class of 1974 we're in the W's <laughs> Tom is currently employed by the University of Massachusetts where he di directs the 4-H and volunteer programs for the Pioneer Valley region. He has led four 
H clubs in Hadley. He has led three 4-H clubs in Hadley, Teen Council, Young Astronauts, and Sparkles. His mentoring of the Hadley youth has led to the design of the Hadley Town flag, which currently hangs in the State House in, and in front of the Hadley Town Hall. He's taught CCD classes and was a lector and bingo, bingo captain at Most Holy Redeemer Church. Tom coached Hopkins Junior High School girls and boys basketball teams, junior high girls soccer teams, served seven terms at the Hadley School Committee, where he saw the Hadley School District thrive at a level one exemplary district, serving as chairperson for, very, for many years. He currently serves on the Hadley Disabilities Committee and the Capital Planning Committee. Tom helped build the Hadley Parade Float for the Northampton 350th celebration. It mysteriously appeared again at the Hadley 350th <laughs> celebration. He coordinated and conducted the fundraiser for the Hadley Fire Department to purchase new turnout gear and was named honorary member of the Fire Department. He created the Hadley Alpoli game, which was a fundraiser for the Hadley Farm Museum. My hope is to develop a walking tour for visitors for the, for the Farm Museum next, said Tom. And I quote from the resume that was submitted. Tom is truly a role model for giving back to the community. His time, talent, and energy is given continuously. His love of his family, town, school, and citizens is why I'm so proud to nominate Tom today. Tom, please come forward. Fred C. Wilga, class of 1959. Fred, a self-taught artist, was raised in Hadley. Fred, this is about Hopkins. He began sketching and painting and carving while still in elementary school. When in high school as a senior, his art teacher convinced him to make a career on the art field. Art school was not possible because of the financial constraints, so he decided to instruct himself, his goal to become the best artist he could be. Over the years, he's established himself as a very competent, in a very competitive field, winning many regional and national awards for his ideas and his designs. During these years, he's painted landscapes, wildlife, and portraits. His medium usually is oil paints, where he learned, where, which he learned to master at a very early age, but would, occur, would occasionally do watercolors and pencil renderings. In 1997, Fred discovered the world of natural mineral crystals and started to develop a collection. He decided to do paintings of the crystals and used his talents to capture the, capture the essence of their natural beauty. Fred has completed a series over, of over 130 illustrations for reproduction in a book entitled The Pegamite Mines Known as Palermo, written by Robert Whitmore. Since 2001, Martin Zinn Expedition, Exhibitions has commissioned Fred to illustrate specimens for the use in advertising in many U.S. shows. He was honored to be chosen a featured artist in the 2004 Mineral and Fossil Show in Munich, Germany. His originals and limited edition prints are in many collections in the United States and abroad. Some of his paintings and prints are in the collection of the Gemological Institute of America in California. His passion for art is matched only by his obsession for minerals and his challenge of illustrating them. The answer to this challenge, the joy of completing a painting is dwarfed by the anticipation of doing another. I'm a proud owner of a 42 inch saw which hangs as the showpiece in my living room that I have. He painted it for me and it was, it's a very important painting to me because it shows, it's a rendering of the back of my yard and, and, and what it looks like behind my house. And each and every day, Fred, I look up at that and thank you for painting it for me. Please come forward and accept your award. Mr. Frank Zalot, Jr., sir. Frank is a proud Navy veteran of World War II. He left his senior year at Hopkins to enlist in the Navy to fight for his country. He was stationed in the South Pacific, involved in many combat operations. His story has been featured in the monthly magazine, The American Legion. He was honored by, his country, by the country of New Zealand in 2012 for his service to their country as part of the tour of the U.S. Navy. 
He literally changed their history by providing crucial historical information about episodes that happened while he was in the service. He has a memorial dedicated to him and his fellow servicemen, his portrait on a New Zealand postage stamp, and is featured in a historical movie about the era of their history. He's always been active with service to his community of Hadley. He served for many town offices, including selectmen, building committee, school committee, and he chaired the committee to build the new elementary school. Frank was act always active at Hopkins Academy. For many years, he cooked his famous roast beef dinners at the annual Hopkins Sports Night. He co-chaired several fundraising events and band trips to places such as Expo 67. The word no was never part of his language when it came to helping the school with whatever was asked of him. He was Hadley Scoutmaster for many years, mentoring the town's young men to develop into responsible adults. At 89, he's currently in his 51st year of, of flooding his baseball field and making a nice skater and wrinkle for everybody. I saw you out there yesterday, Frank. Frank, it's also widely known and believed that you are the only graduate to receive his diploma from the trunk of the Principal Reed's car. <laughs> Frank has touched many people's lives with their hearts and many acts of kindness. He's fiercely loyal to his family, to his country, and to his community. When Frank received his letter regarding the 350th award, he called and asked, why me? I'm here to tell you, Frank, because you are a military hero, a school hero, a town hero, and a family hero. You got a hell of a grip. <laughs> Joe Zalot, class of 1948. Joseph Zalot was active as well as a student at Hopkins Academy. He was a class treasurer, class president, and on the Hopkins Arms Board, and a member of the Promarital Society. He was very active in sports, being on the soccer team, basketball team, and baseball team. Hopkins Academy baseball team of 1948 won the Hampshire League Championship, being acclaimed one of the best balanced high school nines in the western part of the state. Joe, paid, Joe played on the infield for the Hopkins team. In 1948, the Hopkins basketball team won the Hampshire League title after a season that ended with a 15-game winning streak. Joe Zalot was in a pivotal spot, developed one of the best rebounding, was known as one of the best rounding men in the valley. Being so quick, he quickly picked up the nickname Zip. At graduation, Joe received the James P. Reed Athletic Medal. Joe attended Amherst College and graduated in 1953 and received his master's degree from the University of Massachusetts. He then went on to a military service army record. Joe was a teacher at Hopkins Academy for, and later served as principal for 15 years. He was the first principal of Hampshire, of Hampshire Regional High School and the very first president of the Massachusetts Interscholastic Inter Athletic Association, the MIAA, and recipient of the Gore Award. During his principalship at Hopkins Academy, he assisted with the Hopkins 300th anniversary celebration and is a current member of the Hopkins 350th anniversary committee. After retirement, he worked at the East Hampton Public Library and continues to work there as a library volunteer. Joe, please come forward for your award. <laughs> Dr. Jane Zapka. Education, Hopkins Academy, class of 1962. Skidmore College, class of 1966. Master's degree in public health, UMass, 1969. Doctorate of Health Administration from Harvard School of Law, School of Public Health, Harvard University, 1978. Work history, UMass Amherst, lecturer in field training supervision, associate professor of health and policy management, professor of health management, Policy and Management, Adjunct Faculty, School of Public Health, Professor of Medicine, UMass Medical Center Preventive and Behavioral Medicine, Worcester, Mass. Adjunct Faculty, UMass Med School Grad, School of Nursing. John Hopkins University, School of Hygiene and Public Health, 
Baltimore, Maryland, visiting professor, faculty, associate. Harvard School of Public Health, Boston, Mass., visiting scholar, adjunct faculty, health policy and management. University of Lindbergh, the Netherlands, visiting scholar. Medical University of South Carolina, Department of Public Health, Charleston, South Carolina, professor 2002 to present. Medical University, South Carolina, College of Nursing, Charleston, South Carolina, adjunct professor 2004 to present. Please come forward, doctor, and receive your award. We started 31 people ago with a man who paid the ultimate sacrifice by laying his life down for his country and concluded with a very distinguished career of a Harvard graduate. Along the way, we noted the careers of teachers, farmers, military personnel, artists, business people, lawyers, judges, district attorneys, town employees, and volunteers, all who certainly qualify as distinguished alumni of Hopkins Academy. We certainly, this certainly is a diverse group of people, of exceptional people who we're proud to honor today. The foundation of their success was installed in these very buildings. We are sure that Hopkins Academy will continue to graduate future distinguished alumni. I'd like to introduce Joe again. All right, do we have the uh, superintendent of schools, the uh, member of the school committee, or the principal of Hopkins here? On behalf of the Hopkins Academy 350th Anniversary Committee, uh, I'd like to present this plaque to you, uh, which contains the names of all our outstanding alumni, and uh, this would be hung uh, at Hopkins Academy. As your interim superintendent for two years, I feel very fortunate to be here at this special moment in time to accept this plaque. Um, I'm accepting it on behalf of all of those that came before us and all those that will come after in believing in and supporting Hopkins. We'll find a wonderful place to display it. Thank you. At this time, if we could please have Bernie Wyman, president of the Alumni Association, please come forward. Don't worry, they gave me one minute. <laughs> I think Fred Luddy took all my time. Um, anyway, as president of the Alumni Association, of course, I want to congratulate all of our wonderful, distinguished alumni. We're all very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Uh, you know we have wonderful alumni all over the country and all over the world doing amazing things. You're kind of our local sampler, and congratulations. One other thing before I, my minute's up, um, I think because today is recognition day that we should recognize the 350th committee. What a hard working committee. They have worked for two years and every meeting I come out of, I think, my God, they are working so hard. Joe Pillis has been at the helm and I think he has spent more time in Hadley in the last two years than when he lived here. <laughs> and those of us who are on the committee know that it doesn't, it's, it's not a, a weird thing to get a call from Joe morning, noon, or night saying, 
Joe, it's Bernie. Uh, Bernie, it's Joe, and I've been thinking. Or, Bernie, it's Joe, and I'm in Hadley, and so I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I would like all of the committee members to stand or at least raise their hands and I think they deserve a big round of applause because I do not believe we would have had any birthday celebration for Hopkins without them. Thank you very much. I want to also thank the uh, people that are part of our committee too. There are all, um, other people that are helping us out tremendously on the sidelines and um, members that are coming to meetings. Uh, this is short and sweet and I'm not going to hold you in, um, too much longer either. Um, do you want to have Richard Wire first? What? Do you want to have Richard Wire first? Oh, uh, yeah, we could do that. Uh, well, no, let me read this. Excuse me. Okay. okay. I'd like to leave you with an excerpt taken from a letter by one of our outstanding alumni written 50 years ago to the alumni of Hopkins Academy. This year, 1964, holds a special significance for the alumni of Hopkins Academy, for it was 300 years ago in 1664 that the school was founded. Very few high school graduates in the country can claim the distinction of having received a diploma from a school that has been in continuous operation for 300 years. Personally, as an alumni of Hopkins Academy, I consider this a great honor. This was written by Joseph Zala, principal of Hopkins Academy in 1964. Now we are about to celebrate our 350th anniversary and have the distinction of saying we have received a diploma from a school in continuous operation for 350 years. Hopkins Academy can be proud of its graduates who have made valuable contributions to society in every field of endeavor. These accomplishments have proven that the wishes of Edward Hopkins have been fulfilled. Again, I congratulate our outstanding alumni. I'd like to call Bill Dwyer, Chairman or President of the Trustees of Hopkins Academy to please come forward. He said he wanted three seconds, maybe 30. I'll come right out and promise not to sing, even though I am Irish. Uh, usually when we're in this room with this crowd and with Jerry Devine at the podium, it's town meeting. And sure enough, we're going to argue about something. However, uh, I hope there'll be no argument today. On behalf of the trustees, we want to announce with our appreciation to the 350th committee that we are making a grant of $15,000 to the continuation of the celebrations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dwyer, and thank you very much, trustees of Hopkins Academy. Before we leave, I'd like to just thank a few individuals here that have uh, made this affair possible. Uh, the first one is Stanley Adams. Stanley did all the decorations here uh, for our Stanley is a class of 1963. Hadley Mothers Club, tremendous job, food, and helping us out. <laughs> the school and staff, uh, Father Sean O'Connor, <laughs> Maple Line Dairy, Hadley Young Men's Club, they donated all the tables. Barstow's Farm Stand. Richard Truswell. And of course the trustees of Hopkins Academy. 
One, under, one, one other individual I'd like to thank who spent a lot of time helping us out is not a graduate of Hopkins, but a graduate of Smith Academy. And that's my daughter-in-law, Heather. She did all the lettering for the certificate. Heather, would you stand up? Okay, we would like uh, the Hopkins Academy Chorus to lead us in singing the alma mater, one verse, and it's on the back of your program. We'd also like to thank them for joining us today and taking time out of their Sunday. Fields of grace. 